Today we're going to look at the two-handed weapon in the spear. If you're unfamiliar how the weapon mastery systems work, well, essentially the system works in that the more that you use a specific weapon type, the more experienced that your character will be and you'll get some progress towards your weapon mastery. Once you hit certain checkpoints in experience gaining, you'll be rewarded with points to augment your weapon and your character's performance with skills and passives based around that weapon type. The purpose of these guides is that you can learn everything there is to know about the spear, that way you can plan out your spear wielding character accordingly based on the passives and the skills that you like the look of most. Why is this necessary? Well, the weapon mastery system isn't as easy as just power level a specific weapon until you unlock the perks, nah. You won't be able to unlock every single item in both skill trees for your weapon, and you'll have to choose between them based on their performance and, you know, their likeness in your playstyle. So I've decided to put out overviews and guides on every single weapon in the game, that way you can plan which pathway you'd like your character to go down, and evaluate your options on your chosen weapon, you know, and just have a general idea really of what's on offer in the game. Over the course of the series, like I mentioned, we'll be looking at every single weapon type that's available, and how to accentuate them with your statistical decisions. So if we haven't covered your preferred weapon type yet, or you know what archetype you want your character to follow but there isn't a guide yet, if you're not, I'm going to do them all. And the written guides are all done on MGN.GG blog, we're just putting together the videos now. So, if the video is not out for the weapon that you want to watch, or you want to read about, well, be rest assured that on the blog, we've got them all done already. Now we've gotten through the why and how to use the guide, let's look at the actual weapon part in the series. And like I mentioned, it's going to be the spear. The weapon in general has very long attack length, just like regular attacks, and you can take advantage of melee range and any sort of potential crowd control you can dish up in the game as well. You know, the spear has a fair bit of it. Keep the enemy far away enough with your CC and attack from arm's length with your long ass spear. That's a perfect combination. As far as statistical attributes that you should be aiming for when you decide to use a spear as your main weapon, the spear will mostly benefit from having a high dexterity stat, but you know, having strength from your weapons or your level choices will also benefit you somewhat just as not as much as your dexterity would. Along with those two, it's never a bad idea to grab some constitution along the way, just take it up from items, because if you're going to be within melee range, you don't want to be taking heavy damage every time you're close to something. With the recommendations on your second weapon that's going to augment the spear gameplay well, I have to go with the musket for a few reasons. The first being that you can pull mobs towards yourself with your musket shot, and by doing so, engage in multiple mobs at the same time. Having pulled several with the musket and engaged the closest mob with your spear, you know, this is great because you can fight several enemies at the same time with your spear's AoE skills. The second is that using the musket as your secondary will give you access to the trapper tree, which provides roots and slows that will greatly aid you in keeping your foes at arm's length while you engage them with your lengthy spear attacks. The skill trees for the spear are very telling in their names and how their playstyles are going to go down. The leftmost tree is referred to as Zona, and how that's applied is pretty varied. The tree has your AoE pushes, your crowd control effects, and those sort of arm, at arm's length abilities that I mentioned earlier to go along with your musket's root. Wow, I mean, you also get the throwing of your spear, which is just about as cool and satisfying as it sounds, it's really fun. The rightmost tree is referred to as Impaler, and sort of as the name suggests, this tree focuses more on getting closer to your foes to put the spear through them in like the most gruesome way possible. This tree's abilities are about getting your character on top of the foe, then following up with debilitating debuffs and high damage attacks. We're going to look at the active skills of Zona skill tree first, then we're going to swap over to Impaler, and then we're going to through the passives. So, without any further expedition or ado, we're going to go with Zona first. The first active skill for the Zona skill tree is called Javelin. Throw your spear and deal 125% weapon damage to the enemy whilst also inflicting stagger. The cooldown for this is 15 seconds. As usual, all the other weapon guides, we've got some augments for these skills. The first for Javelin is Forceful Impact. Targets who are hit are also knocked down. The next is Refreshing Precision. Headshots with the Javelin reduce its cooldown by 50%. Next is Deadly Distance. Add 2.5% damage per meter the Javelin travels to a maximum of an extra 100%. The next active skill is called Sweep. Sweep the target enemy's legs out, dealing 75% weapon damage and knocking them down. The cooldown for this is 10 seconds. Tenacious Sweep. 
Sweep gains grit and it becomes unblockable. The next is Coupe de Gras. A pressing light attack during the sweep animation will cause the player to follow up with a powerful stab that deals 125% weapon damage. The third active skill for the Zona skill tree is referred to as Cyclone, a spinning attack that deals 100% weapon damage to enemies in the AoE, pushing them back 3% and applying a 50% slow for 3 seconds. Cooldown on Cyclone is 12 seconds. Cyclone has some augments as usual, the first being Invigorating Combo, Restore 25 stamina per hit with the Cyclone's AoE. And the next is called Strong Momentum, applies grit to the Cyclone, making it unblockable. Okay, now that we've gone through the active skills of the Zona skill tree, we're going to move over to Impaler. The first active skill on the Impaler skill tree is called Skewer. Rush forward and skewer the target with your spear, dealing 125% weapon damage and applying bleed. Enemy suffers 10% weapon damage every second for 10 seconds. The cooldown for Skewer is 15 seconds. As usual, it's got some augments, the first being Deadly Ambush. Deal an extra 20% damage with Skewer against targets who are at full health. The next is Follow Through. Gain in power on Skewer critical hits, increasing your damage done by 20% for 10 seconds. The next is Deep Wounds. Bleed duration of Skewer is increased to 15 seconds. The second active skill under the Impaler skill tree is called Perforate. Three quick piercing stabs that each deal 70% weapon damage and apply rent. Reduce the target's damage absorbed by 5% for 10 seconds. The cooldown on this is 15 seconds. Perforate's organs are rupturing strikes. Rend reduction increased to 10% per perforate stab against targets that have 50% or more of their health. And the second is called impactful strikes. Enemies hit with perforate are staggered if they are hit with all three stabs. The third active skill under the Impaler skill tree is referred to as Volt Kick. Use your spear to prop you for a vaulting kick at your target, dealing 75% weapon damage and applying a stun to the enemy hit for 1.5 seconds. The cooldown on Volt Kick is 15 seconds. The augments are the first being Relentless Blows. Gain in power when you hit an enemy with Volt Kick that is below 50% health and increase your damage dealt by 20% for 5 seconds. The next is Continuous Motion. Cooldown for all other spear actives is reduced by 30% when you land your Volt Kick. Okay, now that we've gone over the active skills for both trees and their augments, we're going to swap over to the passives. These are something that you don't have to activate, they won't appear in your skill bar, but if you take them, you're going to get these boosts. Refreshing Reach. Successful heavy attacks reduce all spear cooldowns by 15%. Deadly Consistency. Additional 10% damage on consecutive heavy attacks against the same target. The next is Invigorating Criticals. Restore 20 stamina when each critical hit lands. Strong Conditioning. Additional 30% stamina regeneration when your stamina is below 50%. The next is called Deadly Reach. Additional critical hit chance when attacks on targets that are more than 3 meters away. It's just as insanely good as it sounds. It works really well with the throwing spear. The next is Evasive Maneuvers. Dodging backwards consumes 20% less stamina for 2 seconds after landing and the attack. The next is Merciless Strength. Additional 25% damage against targets that are knocked down. Defensive Stance. Gain Fortify after landing a heavy attack, increasing damage absorbed by 15% for 2 seconds. The next is Reserve Strength. Additional 25% damage whilst you are at full stamina. Then there's Precise Jabs. Additional 5% to critical hit chance on your light attacks. Then there is Crippling Jabs. The last hit of your light attack combo applies a 30% slow for 3 seconds when hitting targets below 30% health. It's pretty situational. Unerring Precision is next. Additional 20% damage against targets affected by your grip attacks. Exacerbating Criticals. Land a critical hit on an enemy will extend the duration of your debuffs and damage over time effects by 20%. The next is Refreshing Jabs. All spear cooldowns are reduced by 10% on the second attack in your light attack combo. The next is Finishing Blows. Additional 15% damage against enemies with 30% or less health. Aggressive Maneuvers is next. Landing an active within 2 seconds of dodging an attack will reduce all spear active cooldowns by 20%. Next we have Exposed Wounds. Additional 15% chance to land a critical hit when attacking targets who are bleeding. 
And the last is Exploited Weakness, additional 10% damage against the target per active debuff to a max of 30%. And that's just going to be about it for our overview of the Spear Mastery for Amazon's new MMO in New World. We hope you found the information useful in planning out your character. We hope to see you online. If you have any suggestions or comments, well, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.gg blog, our YouTube channel, of course, the new MGN at MGN underscore TV, and our Discord. As usual, links for all these can be found within the description of the video overview, and we'll see you online in the new world.